Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. We're talking Return to Home for the DJI Spark. Stick around to learn all the gory details. The Spark has three ways that the Return to Home is triggered. The first is user initiated by a user pressing the button here on the remote control or a software button in the DJI Go app here. And that uh, DJI calls that the smart RTH. The second way the RTH can be initiated is via software with the low battery warnings. Once the battery gets down to around 20%, then it's going to automatically initiate an RTH procedure and you have the opportunity to be able to cancel that if you choose. Now the third way that an RTH is initiated is a fail-safe RTH, and that is when whatever you're using to control the spark becomes disconnected from the spark. Now in my case, I'm using a remote control, and so after three seconds of the remote control being disconnected, the spark by itself will automatically initiate a return to home. Now, if you're just using a device without a remote control, so you're using a phone or you're using a tablet and you're not using a remote control, that timeout is actually 20 seconds for a Wi-Fi connection. So after 20 seconds of it being disconnected from your device, it will automatically initiate a return to home. The most important part of return to home is that it needs to have GPS lock. In the software, it needs to have GPS and it needs to have at least 10 GPS satellites. And it needs to be in GPS mode. If it is in Addy mode, it will not work. Okay, so the return to home feature is very dependent upon GPS because that's how it knows how to get somewhere. It doesn't know where it is unless it has a GPS signal. So if you are up flying your Spark and it suddenly changes from GPS mode to Addy mode, you do not want to try and hit the return to home. You can try, but it's not going to do anything because it doesn't know where it's at. It doesn't have a GPS lock. So you need to get on your controller and start controlling it via the sticks. The return to home is not your friend with an Addy mode situation. If it goes to Addy mode, don't worry about return to home. You get on those sticks and you start controlling it yourself. Once a return to home has been initiated, whether that is a smart RTH, which was initiated by the user, whether that was a low battery issue or whether that is a fail safe issue where you became disconnected from device controlling it. Once that RTH is initiated, the process is going to be the same no matter which three of those methods initiated that. The other important piece of a return to home is that it needs to know where home is. When you first turn on your Spark, you're going to want to wait for it to tell you that it has marked its home location. So you generally would not, and I would say 99% of the time, you do not want to take off your spark until it has marked the return to home location. Now there are ways to be able to force that. You can go into the software, go into the main controller settings, and there are two settings to determine where the home point is recorded. If you are physically in a different location than your Spark is, and you want to mark that as your home point, you can use the second option, which is where the controller is at. So there's two options for manually marking where your home point location is. The first one is its default method, which is where the Spark itself is at. So whenever you press that button in the software, wherever your Spark is, whether it's right next to you, or it's 100 meters away, that is going to be where its home point is located at. So you should always check, once that home point is set, you should always check in the map and verify is that really where I wanted to go home to. The reason this is important is because if its GPS is not working right, you want to break that chain and make sure that you're not telling it to return to home to California when you're in New York. So you just want to verify that the return to home location in your map looks like an appropriate place. Maybe you don't want it to return to home to where the spark itself is, but you want to return to home to where you are currently with the controller, whatever device you're using to control it. Now the important part to note on that is that if you choose that option, it marks the home point as wherever you are at at that moment. 
So if you move to a different location, say you're in a canoe going down a river or you're out for a jog, that place is not continuously updated. It is marked where you were at at the time you chose that option in the software. It is not continuously updated. So the other features in the software that affect how it behaves and we're gonna go through and show you different scenarios here. There are two other settings in there. So there is a return to home at current altitude, and that's the uh, either enabled or disabled. And there is a return to home altitude that you can set, and that can be anywhere between 20 meters and 500 meters. So if you wanna try and set that to 10 meters, that's not gonna work. 20 meters to 500 meters is the uh, loud setting there. Now the return to home at current altitude is something that I think that there might be a little bit of a misconception on, or at least there was a misconception on my point on how that works. Hopefully I'm the only person that was uh, not very smart and didn't understand how this works. There are four different zones, different distances away from the home point that determine how the spark behaves when it does a return to home procedure. So the first one is zero to three meters, then there is three to 20 meters, and then there's 20 to 100 meters away from the home point, and then there's beyond 100 meters. And so depending upon how far away the spark is from the home point, when the RTH is initiated, it will do different behaviors. So between zero and three meters, if the RTH is initiated, it just lands, it just goes straight down. Now, when I say lands, and this is going to be the same for all of them, it's going to return, it's going to go down, and it's going to go down to half a meter, which is about a foot or two, somewhere around there, and it's just gonna sit there and hover. And the reason for that is, what if that RTH, or what if the home point where it's going to land is water, or what if it's not a stable surface, or, you know, there's all kinds of different reasons. You may not want it to actually go to the ground. Now I've seen people make comments and I've seen videos where people have said, well, why doesn't it just go on the ground? Well, what if you're in a canoe and it initiates that and it goes to the home point and it's sitting there, do you just want it to go automatically go into the water or do you want it to sit there half a meter up and wait for you to actually try and get control of it and put it in an appropriate spot to on the ground or in your hand or something like that. So I think there's a lot of good reasons for that. For when it finishes its return to home procedure, it's going to sit there at half a meter above surface and wait for you to tell it, yes, go ahead and go down all the way. From zero to three meters away from the home point, the spark is just going to go down and it's going to hit that half a meter and it's just gonna stay there. It's not gonna move back towards the home point or anything. It says, I'm within three meters, you know what, that's good enough. Let's go down. Between three to 20 meters away from the home point, the behavior is going to be dependent upon the setting here, which is the RTH at current altitude, whether that is enabled or not. If that is enabled, then it has a decision point based on its elevation. Is it two and a half meters above the ground or is it above two and a half meters? If it's if it's below two and a half meters above the ground, it's gonna raise up to two and a half meters and come back and then go down to its half meter hover point. If it's above two and a half meters, it's just gonna stay at its current altitude and come back to the home point and then settle down to its half meter hover point. If that RTH at current altitude setting is disabled, it's just going to go down where it currently is. So it's going to behave very similar to the zero to three meter behavior. It's not even gonna try and make its way back. It's just gonna settle down to that half meter hover point where it's at. If your spark is beyond 20 meters away from the home point, it's just going to totally ignore the setting for the RTH at current altitude, and it's automatically going to read the return to home altitude. It will automatically raise up to whatever the return to home altitude is, which by default is 30 meters, roughly 100 feet. It will raise up and it will come back to the home point and then settle down into its hover at about half a meter and wait for, for you to tell it what to do. For that, that return home, so the process of coming back is different based on whether it's beyond 100 meters or inside the 20 to 100 meters. If it's beyond 100 meters away when it, the RTA 
speech is initiated, it's gonna say, you know what? I gotta get back as fast as I can. And it disables the object avoidance sensors. And it's gonna come back at 20 miles an hour, 20, 22, something like that, miles an hour. It's gonna come back fast to try and get back home. Cause it's saying, okay, well I'm out of battery or I lost connection or something. Let's get back home as quick as we can. So it's gonna ignore any uh, obstacle sensors. It's gonna turn those off and it's just gonna beeline it back home as fast as it can and settle down into that hover at half a meter. Now that's important because you need the return to home altitude set at an appropriate setting for your environment. If you're in a forest and you have a canopy of trees above you, you don't wanna have the return to home altitude set at 500 meters because you don't want it to go up into the canopy. If you're outside in an open area like I am here in my backyard, I have nothing above me, but I've got houses, I've got trees. You wanna make sure that that setting is set to something higher than those objects for coming back. Now, if it's between that 20 to 100 meters, then it's still gonna do the same process. It's gonna rise up to the return to home altitude and it's gonna come back. But in that case, it's gonna come back at a slower speed where it can maintain the obstacle avoidance sensors. Because it's only 100 meters away, it's saying, you know what, I can get back in time so I can have my obstacle avoidance sensors enabled. I'm gonna slow down a little bit and I'm gonna come back and then settle into that half meter above ground. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and we're gonna walk through each of those scenarios with my spark. Okay, so the first test is between zero and three meters away from home. The spark is just up in the air right where it took off. So that is its home point. So we are going to initiate a return to home. As you can see my dog playing around out there. So you can see it is just trying to land at that point right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it. So that is zero to three meters. So I cancel the return to home. Okay. So that's zero to three meters. It just automatically goes where it is right now. The next one is depending upon what the setting is for the return to home at current altitude. Uh, that's disabled right now. So between three, three and 20 meters away from its home point, it doesn't matter on its height because that option is disabled. It should just try and land wherever it is right now. So we're gonna go, uh, we'll go up just a little bit. So we are five meters away, uh, two meters up, and we're going to initiate return to home. And you should see it just tries to go down right where it is. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cancel that. Now we're going to change that setting, mask, and we're gonna enable RTH at current altitude. So now if it's below, if it's further than three meters away, uh, three to 20 meters away, and it's below two and a half meters, it should rise up to two and a half meters, and then come back to the home point and try and go down. So let's do that. It's currently 1.3 meters away, and five or five meters away and 1.3 high. So it's gonna raise up to two and a half. And then it's gonna come back to the home point. And then it's gonna go ahead and go down. Trying to find a spot. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, so that's all the features and different options of how the Spark does a return to home. I hope that was useful. Hope you learned something. I definitely learned something. The one that I learned was if it's further than 20 meters away, it's automatically doing that RTH to the specified altitude. Doesn't matter if it's disabled, if things are disabled, enabled, it will do a rise up to that RTH altitude and then come back. I didn't understand that. I thought that that was something that you could disable, but when it is further than 20 meters away, it automatically does that. All right, so hope this was useful. Hope you guys had a good time. Hope it helps you understand the spark a bit better. And uh, if you're having a great day, awesome. If you're not, make it a great day, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.